BBC documentary reveals the story of Nigerian imprisoned for atheism. So this is really cool. BBC Africa recently released a new documentary titled The Cost of Being an Atheist, which showcases the landmark case of Mubarak Bala, the president of the Humanist Association of Nigeria. The documentary also reveals the threats to religious freedom in Nigeria and features interviews with numerous other atheists who face discrimination and even threats to their life. On April 20th, 28th, 2020, Mubarak was arrested at his home in Kaduna after he posted criticisms of the Prophet Muhammad on his Facebook page. In the documentary, BBC journalist uh, Yamisi Adegoke talks to Leo Igwe, the founding member of the Humanist Association of Nigeria, Mubarak's wife, Amina Ahmed, and even the lawyer who wrote the petition that prompted Bala's arrest. According to Bala's lawyer, James Ibori, he was denied healthcare access, kept in solitary confinement, and forced to worship the Islamic way. He was also detained for two years without any charges or trial. Initially, Bala maintained his innocence. However, on April 2nd, 2022, he pleaded guilty to 18 charges of blasphemy. The Hanokai High Court sentenced Bala to 24 years in prison. So, yeah, Dee was saying, I was thrilled to see this get attention. So this is really big. One, because we have been following the case of Mubarak Bala ever since he was first arrested and illegally detained for this incident where he made a Facebook post comparing the Prophet Muhammad and this other pastor or preacher basically to a terrorist and then that pissed off a bunch of people and it all unfolded, right? And then this year, he was sentenced to 24 years in prison for this blasphemy. And it's really awesome that this is finally getting widespread attention. The BBC made a 30 minute documentary about him. And I love that they named it specifically. The title of the documentary is The Cost of Being an Atheist. Because oftentimes when atheist prisoners are reported on, they are never properly identified as being persecuted for their atheism. Like in the case of Sohail Arabi, the Iranian atheist prisoner, when his mother was recently sent to prison for advocating for her son, even sources like Iran Wire, the headline was, oh, mother of Iranian blogger, you know, sent to prison, blah, blah, blah. Sohail Arabi is not just an Iranian blogger. <laughs> He's a blasphemer, an open and unrepentant atheist, and an anarchist. He's not just a blogger. He's being persecuted and he was sentenced to death for his blasphemy and atheism. So to see it being titled, The Cost of Being an Atheist, was so significant to me. Also, this documentary is really, really good. It's 30 minutes long. You can watch it on YouTube. And um, it goes not only into the case of Mubarak, but also into the greater issues in Nigeria in general. It talks about the contentions between the North and the South being Muslim and Christian. And um, it also profiles many other atheists and what they go through. Like they talk to a nurse who faced discrimination and problems at her job because it was required by the company policy that you have to pray before you start work and before you give someone an injection and she refused to do so. And then they also talk to another atheist who they don't show his face, but he, when Mubarak Ball was arrested, he basically made a post saying like, hey, no one should be persecuted for their atheism. And because of simply saying that, that person then had to go into hiding because they accused him of blasphemy. And so they interviewed him, you know, completely obscured and everything. And then finally, they also go into depth in about uh, Mubarak's case and give so many details that I had never heard before. One, they go and interview the man that started the petition that prompted this whole problem against Mubarak for the first place. They interview the guy that basically set off this witch hunt against him. And when they talk to that guy, he, as they're talking to him, 
And they're talking about, okay, so what did Mubarak say that was so, that bothered you so much, blah, blah, blah. Like, if it bothered you, you could have just blocked him. You don't have to look at it because this was posted on Facebook. And he's like, there are some things that people say that you cannot sleep. If, if someone says this about someone that we, the Prophet Muhammad, who we love more than our parents, more than our family, more than anything, we cannot sleep. We cannot take this in. And he was getting angry again. And he was saying, I'm uncomfortable right now because I'm so angry. Like, just even thinking about it two years later. And then what's most important is that this documentary actually reveals for the first time why Mubarak was sentenced this way. Because when he was sentenced to 24 years for a Facebook post this past April, we were like, what happened? This came out of nowhere. Even according to Nigerian law, the sentence should have been only like two or three years. And he had already served two years in illegal detention. So part of his sentence should have been commuted. This documentary reveals what happened. So he, what happened was he went to court and there on Humanist International is reporting that Mubarak was pressured. Oh, wait, keep that comment up from D because I want to read it. Um, Humanist International reports that Mubarak was pressured behind the scenes regarding this. When they were going into the courtroom, and they were reading off the charges, 18 different charges against Mubarak. He stood up, unprompted by his lawyers, blindsiding his lawyers and saying, I plead guilty. And his lawyers like literally tried to like pull him down. They're like, what are you talking about? No, 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 no. We want, we, they didn't even get a chance to read their defense. And what happened was then, the reason why he got 24 years was because he had 18 charges against him. He pled guilty to all charges. And what the judge decided to do was give him the maximum sentence for each of those charges individually and have the sentences run consecutively instead of concurrently. So saying, okay, you have to serve the time for this charge, then you serve the time for this charge, then you serve the time for this charge, da, 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 da. But the turn, what happened was Mubarak had been under the impression that if he pled guilty, he would only have to serve one year because he had already been in detention for two years illegally. Like I said earlier, commuting some of his sentence. But that's not what he got. Instead, he got 24 years of serving these sentences consecutively. So finally... That makes sense about how this all went down because when this news came out in April, everyone was so confused. 24 years this came. What? That doesn't even make sense. How does it get that bad? That's how it happened. And so then when this you know shocking verdict comes out, then they go and they interview lawyers again and they interview Leo Igwe, who Armin and I have actually interviewed on this channel when Mubarak was first arrested. So you can go um, check out that interview we did. Um, it's one of my favorite interviews we've done. I love Leo. Um, and basically talking about how this sends such a terrible message to atheists in particular in Nigeria, but also just people in general. Because this, this issue of blasphemy and free expression isn't something that only hurts atheists, you know? Like, this affects everyone. And to see the stakes being raised that high for someone who had as high of a profile as Mubarak, who was like the most prominent ex-Muslim in the country. Then what does that say to your average person who isn't the head of an entire humanist association for the nation, you know? Someone who doesn't have all of the international connections that Mubarak had. So... I don't know. I would really encourage everyone to go watch the full documentary again. Just Google like BBC Africa, the cost of being an atheist. It got one thing I also really loved is it got a lot of views when I watched it. I can't remember what it was, but on YouTube and there were it encouraged me to see the comments filled with people saying this is crazy. This is unbelievable. Like, what if this happened to me? Like, I'm not a believer or I'm a believer, but I think this is insane. This is intolerable. Um. So I, that's one thing that I, I, I really did like to see was seeing people in real time in the comments, getting that awareness 
and also like having these conversations was really important. But um, yeah, let's watch the preview for the documentary here. I'm a critic of religion. People take it as an insult, but I don't see it as an insult or blasphemy. Mubarak Bala is an outspoken atheist from Kano, a conservative state in the northern part of Nigeria. He frequently shared his beliefs on social media and later became president of the Humanist Association of Nigeria. Mubarak's forthright criticism of Islam and religion in general caused outrage among conservatives in the country. And after Muslim lawyers in Kano complained to the police, he was arrested in April 2020. Millions of threats, they're going to kill him, they're going to chop his body, they're going to cut off his head. Just reading all these posts make me unhappy. I honestly can't believe that BBC has a documentary with the with atheists in the title. I don't know if people understand how significant this is for our cause for protecting atheists worldwide. The amount of normalization, especially atheists within the context of a country like Nigeria, the amount of normalization of this word, the amount of uh, steps that we have made forward when it comes to uh, breaking taboos and destroying the sensitivity around being an atheist this documentary is is unique when it comes to what is allowed and what people are comfortable with people are mainstream media has been very uncomfortable with this word atheist and now bbc the one of the most mainstream of mainstream media has a documentary uh, you know, in defense of atheists and the struggle that they have go to go through without hiding the whole the whole uh, activism that is criticizing without, you know, whitewashing it, trying to dismiss or belittle the anti-religious nature of it or the criticism of religion part of it or the atheist nature of it. This is, this is amazing. This is such a huge problem because when Mubarak was first detained, I cannot tell you how many conversations I had with leaders of other atheist organizations because we were ripping our hair out trying to communicate with each other about how do, how do we tackle this? How do we help save him? How many leaders, representatives, spokesperson from other atheist and humanist organizations told me I had a journalist that was interested, but they dropped the story when they found out that he was an atheist. I had their interest because at first they thought he was persecuted because he was LGBT. When they found out that he's not part of the LGBT community and that he's wow. an atheist, they dropped the story. Wow, amazing. So yes, this, this is very significant. Um, I also thought it was one thing that was cool about the documentary was they interview his lawyer and his lawyer talks about how he's an atheist and how he takes up other cases for atheists. And he, he was like, when I take this case, I'm taking it for Mubarak, but I'm also taking it for atheists around the world. No. And I don't know, it was, that's very important because seeing people actually vocalize like an international identity when it comes to these things is something I'm very passionate about, obviously, because <laughs> that's like the spirit of our organization because not enough non-religious people have that spirit and have that orientation. Mm. You have two comments, Ayla. Oh, do I? Oh yeah, you want to read those? Saying, um, it's good they include Leo Igwe, who is doing so much. Literally, Leo Igwe is one of my number one heroes. This man is a <clears> freaking <throat> legend. Also, I don't know. I wish I'd, okay, I okay. I'm gonna ask permission to actually show it. But um, the head of our Atheist Republic uh, Cape Town consulate and YouTube channel that focuses on atheist African issues. So go check out that YouTube channel, guys. Um, Dean, he sent me a picture of him and Leo actually having lunch together recently, which was the cutest thing ever. I'm like, oh, my God, look at you guys. Um, and then Triash was saying that that documentary has had 131,000 views as of now. Thank you for going and finding that number because I couldn't remember. So I love to see that reach. It's so important. Nice. Um, all right. Can we clap for the... No. Oh, wow. No. D is saying... Oh, wait. 
that she actually spoke with Mubarak on Messenger just days before his arrest. My heart sank mm. when I heard. Yeah, I still remember where I was when I found out that Mubarak was arrested. <sighs> it's horrible. Get my best-selling book, Why There Is No God, for free. Click on the link for it in the description.